Are you a, like an M shooter or like a SR shooter or perhaps on the fence to buy one of these cameras? This video is going to have a closer look at how different lenses perform on these two cameras so you've got a better idea of which camera may be best for you. This is an unplanned video off the back of my last video, the Sigma 65 versus the 50 Apo, where some of you in the comments commented that perhaps the 50 Apo only performs well on M cameras, not SL cameras. Hi guys, Matt here from MrLarker.com. I was interested to actually do some testing to see whether or not it's true that the 50 Apo performs better on an M camera than an SL camera. The difference between the M and the SL cameras is the M camera has got a slightly thinner focus stack, meaning any lenses which mount close to the sensor should perform better in the corners and at the edges on an M camera than on an SL camera. The SL camera performs better than non Leica cameras because the SL focus stack is thinner than on other cameras. For example, Sony is known to have quite smeary corners when using M lenses or maybe some of the older Sony's. I'm not sure about the latest one because the focus stack was too thick, meaning you're going to get blurring because the lenses are mounting so close to the sensor. Rather than test just a 50mm Apo lens, I wanted to make it a bit more useful for you guys watching and my theory was that the wider lenses would work better on M cameras as they sit even closer to the sensor than longer lenses which tend to sit further away. I was also interested to see whether Leica lenses perform better on any Leica camera versus non Leica lenses. So with that I picked a series of lenses all amazing in their own right, some Leica, some non Leica, to try to do some myth busting. So the lenses I selected are the Zeiss 21 f2.8 ZM Biogon, super sharp lens, amazing lens. The Leica Elmerit M28 2.8, a spherical, again, excellent lens. The Voigtlander Ultron 28mm f2 M mount, also amazing. The brand new Chinese Sid 5 f2 Apo lens, which I reviewed recently, and it's a really good performer. The Leica Simulux 50 1.4, a spherical, a well known lens to be amazing. The Voigtlander 50 f2 Apo, and then for something longer, the Voigtlander Nocturne 75mm f1.5. So those are the lenses in the test. The test criteria are all photos are shot in RAW, unedited. All photos are shot at ISO 200 thousandth of a second at 2.8. My interest was to test the lenses at infinity. So I just shot out of a bedroom window, and then I took a square crop from the right hand side of each image, and then compared them in Lightroom side by side the photo shot with the M240 versus the photo shot with the SL. So I have 17 observations and then we'll have some conclusions at the end of whether you'll be better to have the Leica M camera or the Leica SL camera. Okay, let's jump into the test. Just a note for this test, all the M out lenses are mounted on the Leica SL via the official Leica M to L adapter. Okay, observation number one. If you mount the 21mm Zeiss Bygon on the M240, you get color cast on the left and the right of the image. Here we're looking only at the right hand crop so you can see the magenta cast. Whereas if you use the same lens on the SL, there is no color cast. Observation number two, in terms of sharpness, the image is very slightly sharper on the M compared to the SL. You can check the image yourself and make your own observations, but for my eyesight, I think it's slightly sharper on the M. Observation number three, going on to the Leica Almerit now. There is color cast if you use the Leica Elmerit M, the latest version on the M240, but again, there's no color cast on the Leica SL, which I find really interesting. Because this lens is a slightly older lens, I think the Elmerit is probably better suited to film than it is to digital, but it'd be interesting to know if you still have the problem of the color cast on say the M10 and M11, for example. In terms of sharpness, the sharpness is better on the M240 compared to the SL, looking at the edge sharpness only. Observation number five, now looking at the Voigtlander Ultron 28 f2. There is no color cast from this lens on either the M or the SL, meaning if you're shooting color photography, this lens is probably better than the Elmerit. Observation number six, the sharpness is similar on both the M240 and the SL, although maybe very, very, very slightly sharper on the M. There doesn't seem to be much in it. Observation number seven, if you are a 28mm shooter and edge sharpness is important to you, get the Ultron, not the Elmerit, because the Ultron easily outperforms the older Elmerit lens. Note at f2.8, so the Ultron is stopped down, whereas the Elmerit is wide open. Number eight, now we get to 35mm, there is no color cast on the M240 or the SL using the 35 Apo. The sharpness is similar on both the M and the SL. And then straight on to the next one, observation number 10, the Simulux. 
51.4 a spherical. Again, there's no color cast on the M240 or the SL. The Summerlux is sharper on the M compared to the SL, but there's not a huge difference, I don't think. Number 12, the Voigtlander 50 F2 Apo. Again, no color cast. And the sharpness is similar on the M240 and the SL. Observation number 13, the sharpness is similar on both the M240 and the SL. And then observation number 14, the Apo is much, much sharper than the Summerlux at the edge shot at f2.8 on these two cameras and finally number 15 if i hadn't lost count of my numbers there is a magenta cast from the m240 sensor where there's no magenta cast on the sl sensor looking at all images and looking where there's no magenta cast being cast by the lens itself okay so the conclusion what is better an m240 or an sl it depends how you shoot and this is only one test from one person so you may have done your own testing and got similar results or different results. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever done anything similar and whether you can relate to the results I achieved. For me if I shoot with wide lenses I tend to gravitate towards the M camera, the 28mm especially but I think M's are definitely suited to 21mm or 35mm for example. The only problem is you're going to get colour cast on certain lenses so from only the few I tested I would get the Voigtland Ultron F2 rather than the Leica lens. And the Ultron F2, if you watch that video, is also better than the version 1 like a Summicron 28 F2. So it is actually a really good lens. If you shoot mostly black and white, the same as me, then you can use the 21 Biogon, the 21 Voigtlander scope R, which I've not included, but also gives color cast. And any of the wider lenses on the M cameras without any problems if you shoot black and white. But if not, you may want to avoid those because it's probably less easy to correct in post. If edge sharpness is important to you, I'd probably shoot on an M camera where possible if using 50mm or wider. Whereas if you shoot portraits like me where only the center sharpness is important, then the SL is probably the ideal camera because generally speaking, it's a much better suited camera for fast aperture portrait lenses. And lastly, does it solve the mystery of why the 50 Apo didn't perform as well as expected in Poland against the 65 Sigma? Not really. In this test, the Apo performed as well as expected, which is pretty impressive and far better than the similar looks at the edges. So I'm not really sure what went wrong in Poland. When I get a chance, I'll try and do a retest in a more controlled environment. And for fun, my bonus observation, the 35 Apo lens is huge, even next to my 75 1.5 from Voigtlander. If you've not seen that video, it is a bigger lens, but it is a great performer. Just avoid the sun. That's it for this quick pixel peeping video. I just want to point out I'm pixel peeping, so I'm comparing edge sharpness versus edge sharpness. I'm not saying that lens one is going to create more artistic photos than lens two. Also, key point to mention, all of these M lenses are going to perform better on like M film cameras because you don't have the problems with the, the focus stack that you get on digital cameras. With that, if you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. As always, a massive thanks to my awesome patrons and see you all in the next video.